Welcome to this Ash Wednesday service. It looks a little bit different. I thought we would be able to have a service in the church, um, but once again, we have been forced to accept different and to do things differently. And so we are having Ash Wednesday service tonight from my home office. The roads are still really icy here in March from the weather. And so um, get comfortable, sit down, grab a cup of coffee, um, relax, get your family together, and we're gonna celebrate Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday is a very important day. It marks the beginning of our Lenten season as we prepare our hearts for Easter. Uh, we come to Ash Wednesday and we celebrate Ash Wednesday to remind us of our sin and our brokenness. Um, we also remember our mortality that we began as dust and to dust we will return. And so tonight as we go through some scriptures and some readings and, and a short message and hear some music, I pray your heart is prepared for worship. I pray that you are truly um, looking at what God is doing within your heart and the words that God will speak to you. Um, we come before God recognizing that that humanity and repenting of our sins and remembering who we are and who we can be. So let's begin tonight with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we come tonight realizing that we are not how you want us to be. So help us let go of the past. Help us turn toward you and live again the life of faith. Help us, gracious God, to call out our fears and our hatreds and our anger and our self-pity and help us lift those burdens that lay on our shoulders. Gracious God, help us set aside any guilt and enter into this time of healing. Let us, gracious God, cling to you tonight and all of the hope that you offer. Rekindle in us, gracious God, a love for you. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. I want you to listen now to this song as it begins to prepare your heart for worship. Uh, but first, a word from Psalm 63 from the Message Transliteration. God, you're my God. I can't get enough of you. I've worked up such hunger and thirst for God, traveling across dry and weary deserts. So here I am, in the place of worship, eyes open, drinking in your strength and your glory. In your generous love, I am really living at last. My lips brim praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms wave like banners of praise to you. As you hear this song, may you truly enter into a sanctuary. Now our 
our scripture tonight from Joel 2. Blow the horn in Zion, give a shout on my holy mountain. Let all the people of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping, and with sorrow. Tear your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, very patient, full of faithful love, and ready to forgive. Blow the horn in Zion, demand a fast, request a special assembly. Gather the people, prepare a holy meeting, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the nursing infants. So tonight we gather. We gather together as the people of God. We gather together as the children of God to set ourselves in front of God's throne, to say, here we are, here's who we've been, but here's who we know you're calling us to be. We set ourselves in front of God tonight, stripping off the decisions that we've made, walking out of our brokenness, declaring our sins, and telling God we want to be different. There are so many people who have convinced themselves that God could never really love them. Um, they've convinced themselves that, that they can't bring who they truly are to God, so they just try to bring the parts that they think are presentable. On Ash Wednesday, we come to be reminded of who we are, um, that first and foremost, we are children of God. We're invited to bring our whole selves into this relationship with, with, with who God is because God loves all of us, all of our parts, not just the parts that we want to reveal or, or the parts that we think are the prettiest or the parts that we're willing to share with other people. Um, my five-year-old grandson, Boone, has every superhero costume and mask you could ever imagine. Um, and I can remember about a year ago, he put one on and he came around the corner and it was Spider-Man. And he came around the corner and he had this mask on and he was sneaking up on me and I looked and I smiled and he stopped in his tracks, almost offended at me that I had, had even acknowledged him. And I said, what is the matter? And he said, you can't see me. And I said, what do you mean I can't see you? And he said, I have a mask on, so you can't see me. You don't know who I am. And so I had to immediately jump on the fact that, oh, no, I know. You're Superman. You're Superman. We do that with God. As, as children, we, as, as children of God and as Christians, we do that with God. We want to hide our brokenness. We want to hide those parts of our lives that, that we haven't made the best decisions. We want to hide those parts of our lives like, the pride and the shame and the guilt and the sin and the, the decisions that we've made and the, the things that we've said and the, the people we're with. We want to hide all of that away from God. And we just want to dress up on Sunday morning and come before God and, and sing beautiful songs and, and pray beautiful prayers and think that that's all God sees. But we know that God is with us all the time. And God invites us to bring our whole selves to him, and to leave those masks behind. Some of us are experts at wearing those masks. We have one that we wear to work. We have a different one for home. We have a mask that we pull out when we go to church. And we have a different one that we pull out when we go to the gym or to, to Target. We have one that surfaces when we deal with conflict. We have one that comes out when someone hurts us. We all have one we wear when we're mad, right? Those are our masks, but I'm here to tell you that you don't need a mask with God. God invites us to take off those masks and to let our guards down and to, to, to truly be fully, fully loved. So many messages of the world are telling us that we need to be someone other than ourselves. We, we need to have the perfect body and the perfect marriage and the, the perfect job and the perfect life and the perfect kids and the perfect family. And that just doesn't happen. And so what if, even if only for Lent, what would happen if we practice being who God created us to be instead of who the world expects us to be? What if we rested in God's presence and, and instead of focusing on the perfect life, what if we focused on the possibility of becoming who God calls us to be? What if we laid everything at God's feet and accepted God's love for us? What if we took off our mask? Here's the thing. We can't live into God's grace and accept God's love if we're constantly trying to be perfect. It's just, it's just not going to happen. 
it does us no good to even try to earn our way into being loved or um, to try to earn that grace because God loves us without end already and God's grace is already there. On Ash Wednesday, we come to remember who we are and that we are children of the Most High God. We come with our whole selves removing our mask because nothing has to be hidden. Nothing can be hidden from God. Whatever it is that, that you're trying to hide tonight, whatever it is that you're pushing so far down, whatever it is you're running from, maybe you're not even trying to hide, maybe you're trying to run from something to just get away from that past, that shame, that guilt, that anger, that addiction, whatever it is, tonight, that's the part you need to offer to God. Jesus calls us to be different. And I want you to hear me on this, not just the world, but the devil would tell you differently. The devil will spew lies. The devil is a liar. The devil speaks no words of truth. The devil speaks no words of peace. The devil is a chaos creator, spewing deceptive words and thoughts to cut you to the core and destroy you. The devil would say you're not good enough or remember when you did this or what about that time you made that choice? No, stop listening to lies. Stop listening to the devil. Stop letting the world tell you who you need to be. I need you to focus and listen for the voice of God tonight. I need you to hear what God is trying to say to you tonight. I read something a few weeks ago that someone sent me that that said the devil can't take you out, so he's trying to wear you out. Don't you dare get tired. I want you to hear these words from Romans 8 tonight. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor any height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You are more than a conqueror. Stop listening to the world. Stop listening to the devil, for goodness sake, and begin listening to what God has to say about you because God says you are his beloved child. <laughs> Thank you.
says about you, but most importantly, whose God says you are. You belong to the Most High God, El Shaddai. You belong to Abba Father. You belong to God. You are a beloved child of God. Do not ever forget that. Do not ever forget that. Um, someone asked me yesterday what devotion I was doing for Lent. And so, Typically, when Lent comes, I ask folks to do two things. One, to lay something down, and two, to pick something up. And so first, the thing that I ask them to lay down is something that keeps them from going deeper in their faith. And so while I think chocolate and Dr. Pepper are great things to give up, and sweets, and um, pulling things out of the closet that, that you haven't used, there's the whole uh, something in a bag, something new, in a, something different in a bag every day for 40 days, and, and then getting rid of it. Um, I think that's all great, but I think it's more important to give up things that you won't go back to. To give up something and pick up something with God instead. To, to give up something and pick up prayer time. To give up something and pick up more study time. To give up something and pick up a devotional. To give up something and go to, go to church more. To pick up, pray more, uh, fellowship more, commune more. All of those things that bring us closer to God. And so those kind of things that we can give up are things like pride things like anger, things like guilt, things like shame, things like addiction, those things that truly hold us back. Because if I just gave up coffee, well, I think that would be very sacrilegious if you knew how much I love coffee. If I just give up coffee for 40 days, first of all, I'm going to be crazy on the second day. I'll be crazy on the first day. But by day 40, I am going to run to that coffee and just drink as much as I can and I'm not going to do as much praying or reading or fellowshipping as I did when I wasn't having coffee. And so if I give up something like shame, and that is truly gone, that is something that separates me from God. And if I can grow closer in that time to God, then by day 40, I am living a much happier life because that shame is gone. Remember what God says about you. You do not have to carry those things. So I invite you to give something up that will make a difference. The second thing I invite people to do is to pick up a different devotional. Something that's not on their nightstand typically or something that's not sitting on their desk at work. Most of us have done the upper room. Most of, the, of us have done Jesus Calling. I typically invite people to do something that that is pretty pretty prominent for Easter time or, or Lenten time to, to truly lead us closer to the cross. And so somebody asked me yesterday which one I was doing. And so I wanted to show y'all which one I was doing. Um, years ago, a very dear, dear friend who has become more like a brother to me. Uh, he truly is a brother. Um, Mark Winter, Reverend Mark Winter. He's our conference evangelist and he has been to Mark many, many times. He came, um, one year to the first church I ever served. And I think it was, I think it was back in 2012, maybe. 
um, wow, Mark's getting old. Um, anyway, I think it was back in 2012. And when he came, he gave me his book, The Devil's Diary. He came during the Lenten season and he brought me this book and he had written it and um, wrote 40 different entries where it could be used during the Lenten season. Um, it's written as though the devil was writing a diary. And so Mark writes each page where the devil is speaking. And then, of course, there's points to ponder. But then he writes how Jesus responds. And so it is a very, very good book. I read it back then, and it has literally been on my shelf ever since. And I decided this was the year I was going to pick it back up because it, while reminiscent of Jesus' time in the wilderness for those 40 days before Easter, um, I think we have been in such a wilderness. I think this whole year has been a wilderness. You know, 2020 brought us the pandemic. Um, so many people lost their lives, and, and I wouldn't even begin to make a lot of that. Um, but it was a wilderness. Um, and now 2021 has brought us this snowmageddon that when will we ever expect in Texas that things would shut down for a week because of snow and ice? I mean, it's just, it's absolutely crazy. And I was really ready for Ash Wednesday. I was so ready for Ash Wednesday. It was going to be the first kind of normal service where it went into a massive major holiday like Easter. Um, and I was so ready to kick that off with Ash Wednesday. And I had prepared for what we would do and all of these kind of things. And then, as I said, snowmageddon hit and we had to do something different. And I thought, you know, for 11 months, we've had to shift and pivot and rotate and do different and come up with different ideas. And it's okay. I mean, it's kind of been the perfect mess. Um, and I think that's what our lives are reminiscent of is perfect messes where God comes in and just cleans up after us. And when we open our hearts and give them to God and it just always works out. It works out for God's perfect will. And so I invite you to pick up a devotion. And if this is one you're interested in, um, you can literally go to Google or whatever you use. There are several books by this title. So you have to type in The Devil's Diary, Mark Winter. And it'll come up. You can have it on four different versions of, of Kindle or e-reader or whatever. If you're like me and you want a hard copy so you can market it and do different things, um, then comment below, and Mark will see these. I'll tag him in this. Um, comment below, and he'll see your name, and he'll send you a message of where where he can send it to. He'll get with you. He'll see your name, and he'll message you, and that way y'all can find out. He said it could be sent directly to you. I think it could probably be done pretty quickly, so you could catch up on the entries. There's, as I said, 40 entries. You could catch up pretty quick, so you could use it through Easter. I highly, highly recommend it. So a great Lenten, great Lenten book to just see how things in the wilderness, It there's not a single one that I've read that I didn't think, oh, when that happened to me, that's kind of like that. And then to see how Jesus would respond. And so so that's powerful to me to be able to, to tie it into my life and use it on a day-to-day -day basis like that. So I highly recommend that. I, I anything Mark does is I highly recommend, but this one is this one is particularly poignant for, for Lenten season. So um as we move forward, um we're about to close out this service here. And so um I want to to kind of do a formal invitation into Lenten. So hear these words from, from our hymnal. I invite you in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word to make a right beginning of repentance. And as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now bow before our creator and our redeemer. Typically at this time, we would line up in the church and we would come forward and we would receive the imposition of ashes where I would take um, ashes on my finger and I would mark it with the sign of the cross. Um, and obviously we're not able to do that. Those, those ashes re remind us of our mortality. They remind us that from dust we came and to dust we return. They're also black and they remind us of our sin. We wear that mark not just for ourselves, but to show other people that we are repenting of our sins and we're seeking to live a different life. And so tonight, um, as I said, we've learned to do things differently. So tonight we're going to do a little bit differently. First, I'm going to pray and then we're all going to take our fingers and we're going to make the sign of the cross on our forehead as we pray. And so um, I'll let you know when, when it's time to do that. First, we're going to say a word of prayer. So won't you bow with me, please? 
Oh, almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Give us, gracious God, as we draw the sign of the cross on our foreheads and envision those ashes, that it would be to us a reminder of our mortality and our penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. And it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our rock and our Redeemer, that we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. At this time, I want you just to close your eyes. Just close your eyes as you envision standing under the cross in your sanctuary, wherever that is. You are standing in the front and your pastor or your church leader, whoever it is, walks to you, takes their finger, puts it on your forehead and makes the mark of the ashes, puts the sign of the cross on your forehead. So take your finger and as we make the sign of the cross, I say to you, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Wipe away my wrongdoings according to your great compassion. 
Wash me completely clean of my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Because I know my wrongdoings, my sin is always right in front of me. I've sinned against you and you alone. I've committed evil in your sight. That's why you are justified when you render your verdict, completely correct when you issue your judgment. Yes, I was born in guilt, in sin, from the moment my mother conceived me. And yes, you want truth in the most hidden places. You teach me wisdom in the most secret place. Purify me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and celebration again. Let the bones you crushed rejoice once more. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away all my guilty deeds. Create a clean heart in me, O oh God. Put a new faithful spirit deep inside me. Please don't throw me out of your presence. Please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Return the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach wrongdoers your ways and sinners will come back to you. Deliver me from violence, God, God of my salvation, so that my tongue can sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. You don't want sacrifices. If I gave an entirely burned offering, you wouldn't be pleased. A broken spirit is my sacrifice, God. You won't despise a heart. God, a heart that is broken and crushed. Do good things for Zion by your favor. Rebuild Jerusalem's walls. Then you will again want sacrifices of righteousness, entirely burned offerings and complete offerings. Tonight, as we close out, I want you to remember that we step today into a world in the strength of God's mercy, living and serving in newness of life. So as you go tonight, be assured that when we repent of our sins, we are forgiven. Through faith in Christ Jesus, we are invited to share in everlasting life. So tonight and forever, may the Lord God order all of your days in his grace. Amen.